Paul and Peter, were they friends or enemies? Every time we think of the great apostles of the New Testament, we can't help but remember Paul, who was formerly Saul, and Peter, who was one of the disciples that walked with Jesus during those years of ministry before his crucifixion. So what kind of relationship did they have? Was there a close bond between these two leaders? Or was there friction? To answer this question, it is best to understand their history and personality, for this explains why they didn't find it easy to bond sometimes. Peter was a tough and confident fisherman who became a fierce follower of Jesus after he met the Master and was called to be a fisher of men. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 through 20. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. As he walked with the master, he stood out as leader of the pack quite quickly as he was never scared to answer the questions everyone avoided. Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was a Messiah. Peter didn't just answer the questions, he was bold enough to ask daring questions. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Twenty-two Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. When the other disciples thought some questions were better left unasked, you could count on Peter to speak up. Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 through 30. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or fields, for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. And when Jesus spoke of his future denial, he boldly declared that he would die with Jesus. Matthew chapter 26, verse 31 through 35. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. His soft side showed under all that brash masculinity when he regretted his actions. Matthew chapter 26, verse 69 through 75. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. 
Of course, his flesh failed him at that crucial point because he wasn't empowered by the Spirit yet. However, after his resurrection, Peter was one of the first people that the angel told the women to inform of Christ's victory so that he would know God valued his loyalty and not feel like a failure who turned his back on his master. Mark chapter 16, verse 5 through 7. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Eventually, he was the one that heralded the gospel and the start of the church in the upper room on the day of Pentecost after he received the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. On the other hand, Paul was previously called Saul and was the educated Jew who persecuted the body of Christ, the church where Peter was now a respected leader. Acts chapter 8, verse 1 through 3. And Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Eventually, Saul encountered Jesus one-on-one, -on -one, and his conversion gave him a complete 360-degree change in attitude and personality. Acts chapter 9 Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. Now, Peter and Saul were now strong Christians on the same side of Jesus' church. How would they relate with each other? Friends or adversaries? There are instances where they definitely have the same revelation on the same topics, and all is good, for they are brothers in Christ. Acts chapter 15 Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers. Unless you are circumcised, according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. When they came to Jerusalem, 
They were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, The Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago, God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the signs and wonders God has done among the Gentiles through them. With them they sent the following letter. The Apostles and Elders your brothers, to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Greetings. We have heard that some went out from us without our authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. So we all agreed to choose some men and send them to you with our dear friends Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, at another point, Peter shares his admiration and surprise for some of the insight God has given this newcomer. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14-18 through 18. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with Him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. However, at other times, it is evident that Paul isn't scared to confront Peter, who he admires, and an elder in the church. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 through 16. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Also, as the people started to pitch their tent either with Peter, Paul, or Apollos, but Paul reminded the members that unity is still the most important in the body of Christ and that we all belong to Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11 through 13, and verse 30. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, a righteousness, holiness, and redemption. In reality, it is obvious that their strong personalities, background, and histories clashed at different times. However, their passion for God and His church is so apparent, this love keeps them cordial and brotherly without malice, even when they disagree on different issues. Despite the failings of both Peter and Paul, both men faithfully presented God's message of grace, 
and Peter closes out his own writings by encouraging his readers to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the bond of love through Jesus that keeps your body together. Thank you for the lessons from Paul and Peter. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for grace to continue in brotherly love with my siblings in Christ no matter our differences, background, and history.